Welcome to the second grade first quarter content support playlist. In this first video, I will provide a brief introduction to the first quarter standards and give a few teaching tips. Now during the first four weeks of school, we are primarily focusing on solving one and two step addition and subtraction problems through 20. Single step problems through 20 will be a review from first grade. The new learning here will be solving two-step problems. These are the three different types of word problems we are working with here. There's either single step involving one operation, or we're doing two steps involving the same operation, both addition or both step subtraction, or two-step word problems where one of the steps is addition, one of the steps is subtraction. When giving students word problems, be sure to include a variety of problem types. The chart behind me, which is also at the end of your unit analysis, explains all the problem types in which students should be proficient by the end of second grade. Notice that at this point, most of the problem types will be reviewed from kindergarten and first grade. The place where they should have, students should have mastered these type of problems is signified in the corner of each box. So all of these problem types here should be mastered by kindergarten. Most of the other problem types should be mastered by first grade. There are only a few problem types that should be mastered by second grade. I'm not going to go into all of the individual problem types today because, like I said, this is at the end of your unit analysis. I did, however, want to point out uh, one important feature of this chart. These top problem types here require an action. That means things are physically being added together or moved together, or things are physically being taken apart. Now the problem type down here requires no action. This means that we have the whole set and we're just looking at parts of the set. So for example, um, there's some red apples and some green apples on the table. We just want to know how many of them. It's still recommended that even at the second grade level that students have access to manipulatives such as math mountains, break apart sticks, and ton frames, especially when working with those more difficult problem types. Be sure to check out your Math Expressions Teacher Edition for more information on how to use these different tools. Well, let me just give you one example or two examples really fast. Break apart sticks are a really handy tool that students are being exposed to in kindergarten and first grade, so it would be great if you could carry it on at the second grade level. This problem right here says there were 10 birds in the sky, some flew away, and seven were left. How many flew away? So we would start by building the number, the total amount, and then we would break apart the part that we know. Well, we know the number is seven. They definitely have seven left, so we break apart the seven, and we figure out, okay, this missing part is the part that flew away. We can also do a similar problem using the math mountain. Uh, there were 10 birds in the sky, some flew away, and seven were left. How many flew away? The, the top of the math mountain always shows the total or the whole amount, and the bottoms always show the parts. So implanting that language or instilling that language of part, part, whole. Do we know the whole? Do we know the parts? Or do we know one part or one whole? In this situation, we know the whole is 10, and we know one part. So let's break apart the part that we know. So we knew the whole was 10. We're breaking apart the part. We have 7. And then we know the other part then is three, and that's our missing part. So using very concrete manipulatives and tools for students until they're ready to move on for, to pictures and then um, more abstract equations. It seems that word problems are always an area of difficulty no matter what the grade, so let's talk about what the research says about solving word problems. In order to solve a problem correctly, students must first be able to read the problem, second, understand what was read, and then third, transform those words that they read into a strategy. Then lastly, students must be able to apply a mathematical procedure. However, research is telling us that over half of the errors that children make are in the first three steps of this, before they even begin to solve the problem. So let's talk about what's causing these errors. Often what's causing this is the focus on keywords. This strategy of teaching keywords is extremely limited because keywords don't help students understand the big situation and the big picture of the problem. And secondly, keywords can really be misleading because the same word can take on a different meaning in different situations. Let's take a look at the keyword altogether. Typically, teachers say that altogether means add. However, in these three problems, uh, the word altogether is used in each, but only one of the problems actually requires students to add to solve. 
In the first problem, it says Jenny has six seashells. Susie gave her 18 more. How many seashells does Jenny have altogether? And here we are adding. In the second problem, it says Billy has 14 baseball cards. How many more cards does he need to have 31 altogether? Well, here we're either using counting on or subtraction to solve the problem, not really addition. Then in the last problem, it says Ryan read 10 pages of, of his book each day for one week. How many pages does he read altogether? I've given this problem to students. Most of the time they say 11 because of that keyword altogether. However, this problem actually requ requires students to multiply. Now in weeks five through six, we're developing fluency with addition and subtraction facts through 20. Remember, fluency can't happen over a short period of time. Uh, so therefore, once it's introduced here, it needs to be maintained across the year. Uh, this is a great time to introduce those uh, mental math strategies that are introduced in our number talks on our CNI Google site. And then once they're introduced here in this unit, the strategies can be maintained over time as you're teaching and using the number talks daily in your classroom. I also wanted to point out something about standard NBT5 in weeks five through six, uh, referring to place value. Now, second grade teachers often express concern that place value is not addressed until the third quarter. However, this isn't true. In first grade, students work with place value through 100, so our job as second grade teachers is to maintain that. But more importantly, in second grade, we have the standard here say, uh, fluently add and subtract. Let me zoom in on this for you fluently add and subtract through 100 using strategies based on place value. So it is our job to maintain this um, place value concept, but just working with numbers through um, right here through 20, but ultimately through 100.